problem. If I give you the name, how do you figure out what the formula is? But before we do that, um, we need to actually come up with and talk about some fundamentals of making compounds. So some fundamental rules are this. Elements always bond together in whole number ratios. Okay, you can't have half a carbon bonding with two-thirds of a nitrogen. They are whole number ratios. And the total charge of a compound is always zero. Okay, you can't have, you can't add up all the different charges like we talked about up here um, and get a number that is other than zero or else you're still working with an ion. So we need the total charge of anything we put together to be zero. So let's look backwards at some of the things we wrote. Uh, we drew an NaCl. Na took a plus one charge, it's in the first family, the alkali metals, and chlorine is a halogen, so it takes a minus one charge, and a plus one and a minus one give us a total charge of zero. We worked with K2O, or potassium oxide. Now I'm going to write this out the long way as K, K, and O. K generally takes a plus one charge because it's an uh, alkali metal, um, and a plus one charge because we have two of them, and oxygen generally takes a minus two. So a plus two, or sorry, a plus one, a plus one, and a minus two will give you a total charge of zero. Say you were given a name of a compound like magnesium fluoride. The way we're going to name this is by first writing down the abbreviation of each one of the two elements that are involved in the compound. So magnesium, Mg, and fluoride is F. And some people say, well, wait a minute, I looked up fluoride on the table, I never saw fluoride. You have to remember that its name has changed because it's bonded, and you're actually looking on the table for fluorine. So the next step in this process, after we write down the the element abbreviations is to figure out what charge they generally take in the compound. And magnesium, since it's an alkali earth metal, it's going to take a plus two charge. And fluorine, because it's an halogen, will take a minus one charge. But if we add a plus two and a minus one, that does not equal zero. So how do we fix it so that we can actually get it to be zero? Well, if I added a second fluorine to this compound, I'd have a plus two and two minus ones, and that actually does equal zero, so we'd be in good shape. So how do I condense all this? Well, the first piece is that we're going to get rid of the charges, and I just want you to write magnesium and then two Fs, but that's kind of cumbersome, and chemists don't write two Fs out. They're going to use a subscript, and they'll write magnesium, and we need two Fs. So this bottom number, the subscript, tells you that you will need two Fs. How many Mg's do you need? Well, you need one. Why don't you write a one in here? Because it's understood. So let's try another example, just like that one. Let's say uh, that I gave you calcium phosphide. First step write out the abbreviation. So we've got calcium and phosphide, which is not on the table. You're going to have to look for phosphorus, remembering that the IDE ending just tells you that it's bonded. And calcium, we'll know since it's in the second column there, it takes a plus two charge. And phosphorus, since it's here in nitrogen's family, will take a minus three. So a plus two and a minus three does not equal zero. So we need to figure out how we can make this balance out. One approach is just to say, well, let's keep adding single atoms until we eventually get to a charge of zero. So if I had two calciums, would that do the trick? I'd have a plus four and a minus three. Now I have too many pluses, not enough minuses. So let me get a second phosphorus. Uh, that didn't fix it though, because now I have minus six charge and a plus four charge. But if I took a third calcium, I'd have plus two, plus four, plus six, 
and a minus 6, minus 3, minus 6, and my total charge would be equal to 0. And I can boil all this mess down into a calcium, where I have 3 of them, and phosphorus has 2. So 3 calciums, 2 phosphorus. Okay. So although the name doesn't actually state how many of each one is how many of each element is in the compound, you can tell by going to their most likely charge and then trying to figure out how many of each would I need in order to get a compound that has zero charge. Now I want you to try some on your own. I want you to give these two a try. Uh, write a formula for lithium nitride so question mark there and the second one I want you to try strontium bromide so pause the video and write these two formulas and we'll get back together and see how it goes lithium nitride lithium is Li it's an alkali metal, so it takes a plus one. And nitrogen is N, and it is in its own family, the nitrogen family, and it takes a minus three. So you should figure out pretty quickly that it's going to take three of these plus ones to balance out the negative three here. So we'll need Li with three and nitrogen with one. Okay, or in other words, Li plus, Li plus, Li plus and minus three. So plus one, plus two, plus three, minus three gives you a total of zero. So Li3N is lithium nitride. The other one I asked you to do was strontium bromide. Strontium is an SR. It's an alkali earth metal, so it takes a plus two. Bromine is a halogen, so it's gonna take a minus one. In order to balance out this plus two charge, we're going to need two bromines, so you'll actually write strontium with two bromines, strontium bromide. Okay, I want to do one last one with you um, before we close, and I want to show you how a lowest common multiple may save you some time. The last compound in this video is going to be aluminum carbide. So aluminum is going to be here in boron's family and take a plus three charge, Al plus three, and carbon is going to be in its own family, and it could take a plus or a minus four charge. So the first issue is, how do I know that it's going to be a minus four charge and not the plus four? Well, I've already got a plus three charge. Aluminum is a metal. It's definitely going to lose its electrons. It is definitely going to become positive. If I had a positive try and bond with a positive, they would repel each other. So the only way to get these two to attract each other is for carbon to act as a non-metal in this case and to lose it or gain four electrons and become the negative four charge. So using our previous method, I would just write out a whole bunch of plus threes and a whole bunch of minus fours until I could get the total charge to zero. But there might be a simple, simpler way called your lowest common multiple, or your LCM. So the lowest common multiple of 3 and 4, notice I didn't worry about the negative, I'm just worried about the two numbers, 3 and 4, the lowest common multiple would be 12. So I'm going to need 4 aluminums in order to get to 12, and I'm going to need 3 carbons in order to get to 12, because 3 4s is 12, 4 3s is 12. So I'll have a compound that's Al4Ca3. Now, if you don't believe me, we can actually write it out. We would have a plus 3, a plus 3, a plus 3, and a plus 3 for a total of positive 12. And I'd have a minus 4, a minus 4, and a minus 4 for a total of negative 12. And my total would be 0. So lowest common multiple, um, if you can quickly find one, may come in handy and make your life a little bit easier. So let's review. We discussed what a binary ionic compound was. So go back through your notes, make sure you know that you've locked in this, this concept and you can properly define this term. Make sure that after this video you can look forward to what other kinds of bonding we're going to talk about. What things will we will, will occur in the next three videos that we're going to 
look through. How do you name a binary ionic compound? What changes occur in the names of the individual elements? What happens to the first element and what happens to the, sec the name of the second element after they actually bond and form a compound? Does the name of the compound actually tell you how many of each element are in there? Um, so go back through this video and make sure you can figure out why you might want to calculate a lowest common multiple and how you figure out what the overall charge of any compound is. Just a shout out to metasynthesis.com. Uh, up here you have their URL, so visit their page and learn more about ionic, metallic, and covalent bonding.